Hello everyone, this is Faith at Faith and Books. How are you doing? Um, last time I made a video, for some reason my little intro didn't attach, so I'm going to try and fix that. And I'm going to put the intro in, or whatever it's called, um, in right now. Okay, so this is going to be a very quick retrospective of the year 2023. Um, I have this nice Folio Society diary, um, and what I wound up doing is just very sloppily listing the books that I read in 2023. So I, I wound up reading 68 books that year. Some of them were, or last year, uh, some of them were chunkers. And some took, or some just took me a long time to read, and some were like children's books. Um, but I'm going to go through them real quick and just highlight some of the things, um, some of the highlights of the reading year. So let's see. So one of the big things I did in 2023 is I read all 11 books in the Horatio Hornblower series, and that was a good accomplishment because I'd been wanting to do that for a few years. Um, I have to say that this time reading them, I did not enjoy them as much as I did when I first read them, I don't know, 30 years ago. Um, but I, but it was a, a very satisfying project and, um, I really enjoyed C.S. Forrester's ability to come up with these intricate plots. Um, and I, I loved his descriptions of sailing and the sea and, um, I just, I, even though I don't understand the tech, technology involved in, in sailing, a sailing ship like that, um, somehow he made it comprehensible to me. So I really enjoyed that aspect of the story. Um, I don't think he did romance well. I, I didn't get any of the romances in, um, in the books. And I think sometimes he was a little heavy handed when he was um, developing uh, Hornblower's personality and his quirks and his his insecurities and that sort of thing. But overall, I really enjoyed that project and I'm glad that I did it. So that was a big highlight of the year. Um, the, um, the next highlight I would say would be The Duke's Children. Um, that was an audiobook I think I only did about four audiobooks in 2023, but that was the la that's the last book in the Palliser series. So that meant that I had finished the, all the all the Pallisers six books in that series by Anthony Trollope. So uh, and I'd already done the um, Barchester Chronicles. So that meant that I completed both of Anthony Trollope's um, big series, and I enjoyed the Pallisers. That, that whole series very much. Maybe not quite as much as the Bar Set uh, Chronicles, but um, very good. I, I really did like that whole series. Um, and then I reread Middlemarch with uh, Linda Jo Martin, and that was enjoyable. And then the next big thing, and this one, I'm gonna cherish this memory forever. I did a buddy read uh, with Jan um, Janelle. Um, we read The Little Minister, Janelle from uh, Too Fond of Books, who passed away in the summer. Um, this was back in February. I think we read this together. And that was so much fun. I love The Little Minister. It's by J.M. Barry, the same person who wrote Peter Pan. And you have to get used to the very thick Scottish dialect. But once you do, the story is just amazing. It's so charming. It's so well written. It's just a, a world unto itself. I really enjoyed it, and it was so wonderful reading it with Janelle. Um, so that's always going to be a great memory. Uh, in in February, we had a Febregency, and I put on a party, a Febregency party, and my daughter made me a Regency dress, and we had um, dishes from the, I can't even remember what I did. One was like a salad. And there was something else. We had a, we kind of modified um, recipes from that era. I got it out of my um, Pride and Prejudice cookbook that my husband gave me a few years ago. Um, and uh, we played piano. I have some musicians in my family. And um, my, uh, my son's girlfriend sang. And we played whist. And we drank uh, port. 
yeah. So it was a fun party. That was really fun. That was a big highlight of the year. Um, let's see. Then I was involved in Sean D. Stanfast's uh, book club called uh, Faded Pages. And we read a number of books before Sean had to stop because he suddenly had to move. And that was a huge, a huge uh, endeavor and took him months. Um, but my favorite book that we read uh, out of the Faded Pages uh, book club was Black Narcissus by Rumor Godden. I just thought it was a stunning book. And I'm, I still think about it. It was a very thought-provoking book. It was, it was kind of sneaky. You just thought you were reading this story, but there was a lot going on. Um, so yeah, I really liked that book. Um, I read the first two books by Emma Stewart, The Bookish Princess. Um, she wrote to, she illustrates, she wrote and illustrates. So these are like children's books. Um, about her cat Cymbeline and I read the the first two of those I still haven't gotten the third one that she just put out so I, I plan to but I haven't done that yet so that was really charming to uh, to read those um, I read two gospels this year I read the gospel of John it was a study group with my church and then I just finished the book of Luke it's 24 chapters and I read a chapter a day in December so that was neat. I read two Shakespeare plays. Uh, I read King Lear, and then we went to see King Lear. Uh, my husband and I, that was a Christmas gift from me last year. And then I also, in, in uh, Shaketember, in September, I read, uh, what did I read? I'm suddenly drawing a blank on what I read. Cymbeline. Oh, I read Cymbeline. I was inspired by, by Emma Stewart's cat's name. So I read Cymbeline. Yeah, and I like, that, but I like them both. I like both those plays. Um, I read River Girl, which is written by Linda Jo Martin. It's a middle middle grade book that she wrote. I read The Wheel on the School by, oh my, it flew out of my head. Oh, can't remember the name of the author. Anyway, The Wheel on the School, it's one of my favorite children's books. I read that out loud to my grandson. I was in a Lenten group where we read The Cloud of Unknowing by Anonymous, and that's a uh, book by a monk about um, um, prayer, about prayer. Um, and it was, it was good and, and felt meaningful while I was reading it, but I, I have to say, I don't know if it stuck with me. However, there might be a, a cumulative effect because I read some other books later that did stick with me and maybe it was just sort of, it got the momentum going. Um, let's see, what else did I read? I finished the trilogy, the Corfu trilogy by um, Gerald Durrell. That was fun. Um, let's see, for, for Historathon, I read, uh, the first quarter I read Kindred about Neanderthal life. That was a huge book with lots of archaeological facts in it about Neanderthal man. I did not know anything about Neanderthal man, so that was a really, really interesting read. But it was it was a slow read for me because it was very fact laden. And then I did in the second quarter. I read fourteen ninety one. I don't have the. I didn't write anybody any of the authors' names down here in this list. But that was about what uh, the American continents were like before the arrival of the Europeans. And that was also a very broad, um, you know, survey of archaeological findings. Um, and that was a slow read as well. So I kind of burnt myself out on that type of history. I just wasn't up for really, really deep history um, like that. So I, I changed my, my uh, approach for this third and fourth quarters of a uh, historathon. Let's see, I read another Mary Roberts Reinhardt, The Window at the White Cat, which was a fun mystery read. I really like Mary Roberts Reinhardt. Um, oh, my husband and I listened to The Tale of Despero by Kate DiCamillo, who's a children's writer. So charming. We listened to this on the way um, down to the beach. Uh, we really liked it. It was really charming, and I want to read more of her books. Um, let's see. Uh, for uh, Jane Austen, July, I reread Sense and Sensibility. That was that was really nice. I listened to the book Terra Viva by Shan Shandiva. No, wait, what's her name? Oh my goodness, 
Vandana Shiva, I think is her, her name, and she is a, a global environmental activist, a uh, very wise woman, very learned. Um, that was that was a really informative book. I really enjoyed that. I read two Mary Stewart books uh, this year, and I had never read a Mary Stewart book before, but I read Rose Cottage, which they're very gentle and, and well-written, but just very, very light. Uh, I don't, I don't want to say fluff, but just very light books, um, kind of cozy. And I also, what was the other one I read by her? Wildfire at Midnight, which I also really liked. That was, that was a bit more suspenseful. Um, I read two Daphne du Maurier books this year. I read The King's General and I read Castle Door. And I think I like Castle Door more than The King's General. Um, but yeah, I read two more and I want to read all her work. So that I feel a sense of accomplishment there. Um, I read The House of Sky, which when we were coming back from our trip to Montana, that was the best book to read. It's a memoir of, um, uh, an author, Ivan Doeg, who, um, who grew up in Montana and I think in the forties and fifties. Um, so that was, uh, that was a really good book, and that makes me want to uh, participate in June on the Range this coming year because I want to read an another Ivan Doak book. Um, let's see, I did one more in the Swallows and Amazons um, series. Uh, I read We Didn't Mean to Go to Sea, which was a very good adventure story. I started reading Nancy Drew books with the Nancy Drew group that uh, Mitzi, at, uh, Mitzi Reads and Writes started. So I've read The Mystery of the Old Clock, what are the other ones that I've read? The Hidden Staircase. And I've read one more. The Bungalow Mystery. Yeah. Um, let's see, I already said that I'd read uh, King Lear and Cymbeline by Shakespeare. For a Historathon third quarter, I read Longitude, which was a reread by Dava Sobel. For some reason, I put that, uh, uh, that particular author in. Um, I didn't put on anybody else. I didn't write any other author in. Um, I read Dr. Wardle's School by Anthony Trollope. So that is my, let's see, wait a second, uh, 12, 13, 14, or, oh, anyway, I'm, I'm getting up there with, with Anthony Trollope. Um, I read Introduction to Christianity by Pope Benedict the Sixteenth. That was so good. It took me six months to read it, and it was amazing and I'm going to read it again because I felt like I really didn't get a lot I had to go through the whole book to get like his whole the structure of his thinking and then I'm going to go back and I'm going to read it in 50 days from Easter to Pentecost I'm going to reread it and I think that I'll get a lot more out of it oh I forgot to say that in May I read where is it Ovid's Metamorphosis which was a bucket list thing because I had been wanting to read that for years. I had a wonderful translation, can't remember the translator, but the translation was absolutely gorgeous. Um, and I went in like really wanting to know about Ovid and it took me April and May to read it. And I decided I really didn't like Ovid. <laughs> I just, as a person, I think he was kind of trashy, um, but boy, could he write, it was, it was really beautiful. Um, Let's see, I read another Agatha Christie ordeal by Innocence. Can't remember a thing about it. Um, let's see, what else? Um, I got through The Way We Live Now, which was my least favorite Anthony Trollope. Um, but I got through it. Um, I read Poor Folk by Dostoevsky. I really enjoyed that. I read The Seven Story Mountain by Thomas Merton. And that, I think, the introduction to Christianity and Seven Story Mountain, those two, and maybe it was the cloud of unknowing too, but I really felt like my relationship with God deepening and my ability to pray, like I feel like I had a breakthrough. And I, looking back at the Seven Story Mountain, it's just a guy talking about his life and I don't know why it had so much uh, impact for me, but it really did. Um, and then the Johnstown Flood, I read that with Linda Jo Martin. That was interesting. Um, Castle Door, I talked about. I read the Dorothy L. Sayers play, He That Should Come. And we did a live discussion. And oh my gosh, I couldn't get my camera to work. 
my grandkids, I, it, it turned out to be a conflict with the time when we were supposed to be watching the grandkids and the grandkids were having temper tantrums. I, there was so many technical difficulties and I had to get off early. So I apologize if anyone saw that. Uh, I just felt like such a, a, a klutz. Um, I read Please Don't Eat the Daisies by Jean Kerr. That was really interesting. This is just stuff I've just read in uh, December. She was really interesting. Apparently, she wrote plays in the 50s, and her husband, Walter Kerr, was won the Pulitzer Prize for uh, theater criticism. But the book itself is, it's like her stand-up comic routine or something. It's not, it's not a narrative. It was an odd book, it, and it was very, very... It was like an artifact of New York in the 1950s. It was just so related to that time and place, the whole humor and everything. Um, so it was an odd book in a way. I want to um, see the movie, though, with Doris Day and David Niven. Um, and then Little Dorrit. I finished Little Dorrit uh, just a couple days before the end of the year. And I'm going to make a separate video about that because I have a lot of thoughts about Little Dorrit. Anyway, those were highlights. I think I, I missed talking. Oh, in, in Jane Austen July, I really, really enjoyed doing the um, Live Like Jane Austen for a day. I think I'm going to do that again because uh, that was really fun. This year, we can't do a Fabregency party. I just actually had a New Year's Day party where we were, it was a 1940s theme. Um, so I'm kind of partied out. I'm still cleaning up from that party. So I don't know how much I'm going to participate, but I do want to do the Jane, live like Jane Austen for a day. Cause that was a really fun experiment. I enjoyed it a lot. So, okay. So that is my retrospective. I tried to talk fast and I didn't have any books to show you or anything like that. So, but, um, but that's it for now. I'm next video. I'm going to make, I think I'm going to talk about, um, little Dorrit by Dickens. All right. Take care. Happy reading. Bye-bye.